There's not a whole lot to look forward to when it comes to Disney Star Wars. Lucasfilm's done a pretty good job of destroying so much hope that anyone could have possibly had in the return of this franchise. But certainly the Acolyte is one of the things that people are looking at that might be the worst of the worst. Led by Leslie Headland, of course, the former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein. Who knows how many women she led right into his arms? Who knows how many things she covered up? And then, of course, was hired by Disney, hired by Lucasfilm. The perfect fit for Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars. But the Acolyte's all about being female-centric. It's all about current-day identity politics shoved into Star Wars. They're very open about that. And like I said, led by Leslie Headland. And there's been a lot of criticism towards her for some of the comments she's made, for things she said in the past, and the fact that pretty much whenever she gets asked about Star Wars, all she can talk about is how this story is going to be inspired by how queer she is and that she's a woman. I'm sure the audience is going to absolutely love that. But something that also makes her a perfect fit for Lucasfilm is how much she disrespects George Lucas. Recently, there's been a video that is making the rounds that has resurfaced. Now, over here, Jar Jar Abrams apparently dug this up eight months ago and put this video up on the channel. This is from a podcast from an appearance she did back in 2019 before she was employed by Lucasfilm, before she was involved with Disney Star Wars, before she started talking about, I loved everything. I love the prequels. I love the Phantom Menace. I just love it so much. She was saying something a little bit different in relation to George Lucas. Not really a surprise, I guess. Just one more person at Lucasfilm who disrespects the legacy of George Lucas. What we understand to be Star Wars, like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, but you look at. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it right there for a second because she's, she's laughing about uh, the prequels, obviously. She's shitting on the prequels right there. Interestingly enough, what happens after she says, oh, I'm going to be working on a Disney Star Wars thing? The acolyte shown her Leslie Headland on profound effect the Phantom Menace had on her identity. How what a big Star Wars fan she was at the time. How she loved it when Phantom Menace came out. She was so interested in it. She loved all parts of it. And then even went into, in this interview, talking about how when Phantom Menace came out, she was discovering her sexuality and her identity. It meant so much to her. Yet, interestingly enough, just a couple years before, shitting on George Lucas's prequels. Weird how that works. Macquarie's work and you realize like what an indelible mark this man has made on on um, culture via this this one role that he played in this film and uh, the idea that like when you're hiring a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph Macquarie that's the problem that's the misogyny and the and the and the problem with the auteur myth. The, that's the misogyny, the misogyny that people are looking for someone like George Lucas instead of just someone who might hire Ralph McQuarrie. Like, let's not get it twisted. Of course, Ralph McQuarrie, like everything that he did, all the concepts he created, phenomenal, incredible, a huge part of what Star Wars became. But the thing is, George Lucas is like the the mind of this entire thing, right? You can't deny that. No one would ever deny that. But for some reason, Leslie Headland on this podcast is trying to spin it that way. And as if people looking for some mind like George Lucas, some creative like George Lucas, who does go out and find the right people to hire to help him build what he wants to build, saying that that's somehow misogynistic to think that, you know, something might only be Star Wars if George Lucas is involved, that that's misogynistic. This, of course, is exactly what I would expect from someone like Leslie Headland, the former Harvey Weinstein personal assistant, somehow talking about misogyny, uh, but a perfect hire for Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy, no doubt about that. We'll let her continue. As it stands today, because they're not thinking, this is the person that will hire the right people, and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place. They're just thinking, do you know, do you have all the answers? And the truth is, is that nobody does, and anybody that says they do is lying. You know, the, the idea that that person is replaceable and the writer director is not is, is something I would challenge. Now, I, I do understand maybe, you know, some of where she's coming from in terms of, you know, you, you have to know what you don't know. You have to be able to hire people to, to shore up on your weak points. You can't be like the end all be all. I do get that. But to use George Lucas as that example is just so funny because what have we seen? 
for the last decade plus of Disney Star Wars. That without George Lucas involved, there is no magic. There's no nothing. There is, there is no Star Wars without George Lucas. That's what we have now realized. With George Lucas out of Lucasfilm, with George Lucas not being involved, even if he's not sitting there and writing everything, but simply checking things off, just like he did with so many of these stories that came out that he, he really had you know nothing to do with. But if he didn't like a portion of the story, if he didn't like somewhere going, he would veto it in a heartbeat because he ultimately had full control over his company. Without him there, we've seen the fall of Lucasfilm and the fall of Disney Star Wars. It seems like at this point in time, to be hired onto Lucasfilm, uh, disrespecting George Lucas is almost a priority for them. It's a necessity. It's something that you have to have on your resume in order to get a job from Kathleen Kennedy. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments section below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later.